Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to model boots. Now, previously in the series, you can see we have set up some default boots and they match the size. And if we were to look at it from the right, the general shape of our boots on our reference image. But because of the way these boots are drawn, I don't want to actually use the boots in a reference image. I would rather go and get real reference images for boots and then model some more realistic looking boots. So with that said, let's go get our reference images. Now, a few of you guys have asked me during live streams and in the comments on some of my recent videos, where do I find my reference images? And the answer to that question is anywhere. So for example, for today's boots that we're going to be modeling, I am using DSW's website. It's a wonderful shoe retailer, but the best part about them is they have angles that will help with modeling the boots. And so what we wanna do is we want to select and download three particular angles. I'm gonna download the bottom of the boot, the top of the boot, and this right side version of the boot because I like to model on the right hand side. If you wanna model on the left hand side though, they have a left hand version of the boot. Now you can also download the front and back of the boot if you're just modeling boots, and that will show you how the boots will stand up on their own. But because our boots are going to be worn by our character, we want to make sure that it looks like the boot is actually wrapped around their leg and foot. So we're going to use this base boot here just to kind of work as a size and width reference for how wide our boot should be one side to the other. So go ahead and download your references and then it's time to add them into our scene. So to go ahead and add in our reference image, let's look at our boots from the bottom. And here we'll add in the bottom boot reference image. So just hit Shift A and then go to Image and Background. Doing that brings up this window where you can just select wherever you downloaded the image to and then double click on the image you wanna bring in. Now, I highly recommend naming your reference images when you download them. It makes them a lot easier to find than whatever Chrome or Internet Explorer or whatever browser you use is going to uh, name it, but that's just me. From now, let's just rotate this 90 degrees on the negative axis, there we go. And then we wanna scale it down so that it's roughly the size of our boot as it currently exists. So let's go ahead and then move this on the Y axis and scale it down just a bit more to something like that. Okay, now I've already set up the other two reference images. So if we look at this from the bottom, we'll see that bottom reference image right there. If we look at this from the right hand side and hide the boots, we'll see this reference image right here. And if we look at it from the top, we'll see the top reference image. So go ahead and get that set up for yourself. And then it's time to actually start modeling our boot. So we wanna model our shoe from the bottom up because getting the base of the shoe correct will help us model the rest of the shoe fairly quickly. So with that said, let's switch to the bottom view with control numpad seven, and then we want to hit shift A and add in a plane. Now the plane is significantly large, so let's tab into edit mode and scale it down so that it fits closer to the size of the shoe. Now essentially what we're going to do is line up the outside edges of our plane with the outside rim of the shoe. So let's take this edge here, move it over on the X axis, move this one over as well, and then we could select the entire thing and rotate it just a bit so that it's going to allow us to follow the shape of the shoe. From there, we just grab a single edge, extrude off, scale it up, and then place it a little bit better. And then repeat that process throughout the entire shoe. Something like that is probably okay. Do the same thing going backwards, scale it up just a bit. And then we wanna add in two loop cuts. So we'll hit Control R to activate the loop cut hotkey and then confirm after we scroll up so we get two loop cuts and then escape to leave those in place. From there, we can make our final adjustments with the back and front of the boot. And if we really wanna get in there, we can get in here and adjust individual vertices to set them up so they line up a bit better. But I honestly think that this is probably okay for what we're working on.
Now let's go to the right side of the boot and adjust these vertices so they match the curvature of the bottom of the shoe. So in the right hand view, we want to go ahead and toggle X-ray so that way we can select all of the vertices that may be behind each other and move them into position. So we'll start by just following along with the bottom contour of the shoe. So that's probably good there. And we'll take this up a little bit further, kind of match that. This one then needs to come over a bit. And these are good. Now that does look a little bit weird if we're just looking at it that way. We could probably fix it a bit by maybe moving these down just a tad. And then we wanna select everything with A and then extrude up on the Z axis. That's gonna give us that thickness there. But we do need to adjust this back heel so that it matches the rest of it. So let's switch to face select, untoggle X-ray and grab these three faces. Then look at it from the right hand side again, and we wanna turn on snapping, but we wanna change the snapping from face to vertex. So then we can hit G, Z, and then move our cursor over uh, to one of the vertices just to the left there, and it'll snap it so that it lines up perfectly with the rest of it. And now we have the bottom of our shoe, and it's pretty good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off snapping, and then we'll create this little indent that we can see on the shoe. It's on every shoe. It's where the bottom of the shoe is stitched to the leather of the sides. So we can go ahead and do that by simply selecting all of these faces in here. And I'm going to use C, which is circle select, and it will select all of those faces. And then I'll just hit escape to cancel the circle select once I've selected everything. From there, I want to hit I, which will then inset these faces for me. And then we'll just extrude this up a little bit, so something like that. And that's gonna give us the bottom of the shoe and the connector piece. And from there, it's time to actually start creating the boot mesh. All right, so now what we wanna do is toggle X-Ray back on, select this top edge here. We wanna make a slight adjustment. And then with those two vertices selected, we are going to extrude out and just follow the contour of our boot. So something like this. And there we go. So now we have the front of the boot done and then we can do the exact same thing on the back. So we'll grab that edge and then extrude up and follow the contour of the boot. Okay, and so when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So now that the curvature is set, what we wanna do is line up for ourselves the face loops. So I know for a fact, we're gonna have a face loop running around here. And then we'll have face loops running this direction, connecting both of those. And then we're also going to have a face loop right through there. So let's go ahead and make that happen. To do that, switch to edge select, and then click and select all of the edges along the outside, then shift, and control select all of the edges along the outside, turn on snapping and hit extrude. So E, Z, and then snap it in place to the back vertex here using that snapping. Then go ahead and turn off snapping and we'll actually do something that'll be really helpful going forward, which is scale all of these vertices to an equilibrium on the Z axis. So hit S, Z, and then zero which will level out those edges and it'll make it easier for us to work as we go forward. So for now, we've got that base edge loop in here and we can remove this stroke and there we go. And then we can go ahead and connect these a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, select the two vertices right here, scale them in on the X axis. And then let's look at this from the right and move them back just a bit and then I can select the bottom edge here and fill that in. Now, the only reason that I can select the single edge and create the entire face is because I have the F2 add-on uh, enabled. Now, it's a add-on that I highly recommend and I've recommended in more than a few videos of my own and during live streams, but just go to edit preferences, search for F2 and then enable that and you'll be able to do that same thing there. All right, from here, I wanna scale this in on the x-axis as well so that we, we can start getting some of the curve to our boot. And there we go. Now we have a face loop going this direction. So we can do that again, take it there and one more and take it here. 
So our boot is starting to come together. Now let's go ahead, fill this back part in. And maybe we can scale this deck a little bit on that X axis to try to get some of the curvature for our boot. All right, so our boot's starting to come together. Now we just need to work on this next face loop and then we'll continue our way up the top. Okay, before we can go any further, what we need to do is actually delete some of these vertices on the inside. So switch to face select, select all of these inner faces right here, and then hit delete vertices, which now is going to leave our inside completely face free, which is gonna be great since you're never going to see the inside of these boots. From there, we do need to make a slight adjustment. See how this face is over here? Well, we're going to switch to edge select, come over and then move it so that it lines up a bit better with the edge loop that it's connected to. And then one final step before we start working on that next edge loop is just to increase the size of these faces and adjust them a little bit better on the X axis. So we can go ahead and scale these up on the X axis and then let's just move them over slightly on that X axis as well because the tongue will come from this point and we want it to be uh, a little bit over because the tongue of the shoe doesn't sit directly in the center like we were having it before. So we'll move it over just slightly and there we go. Okay, so now we can work on that next face loop, grab from here to here and the equivalent on the other side. And let's just go ahead and move this up and hold control so that it snaps to the height of the vertex there. And then we'll go ahead and fill this one in. There we go. Now, we do have a weird situation for how this will connect with this. So the solution here is actually to add in an additional edge loop. So let's just move all of these vertices down on that X axis. We'll move this back a bit on the Y so that it continues to follow the contour of the shoe. And then we can hit F to fill that in and F to fill that one in there. And because we have this weird little piece here, let's just move this over on the X axis and that will take care of some of the weird planar stretching that was going on on that part of the shoe. But I think that that should be okay now. Let's scale it out just a little bit further and we're good. Try to get some of the curvature of the shoe here. Okay, and now it's time to actually start creating the tongue and finish out the rest of the top. All right, so this video got a little long when I was recording it, so I've gone ahead and split the video into two parts. So this is the first part and you've finished everything, but if you wanna continue working on it and make the tongue of the boot and the sides of the boot and see the whole process of also creating laces, you guys can check out the next video in the series, which you'll check out on these end cards. All right, guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments below. Smash that like button or double smash the dislike if you hated it. Otherwise, I will see you in part two.